Today we're talking about how to set your business on autopilot. Uh, I'm going to probably melt your heads a little bit today. Uh, so, so the rest of the presentations will be nice and smooth and really good. Uh, so, so I'm going to get a little kind of technical with you, um, but don't hold it against me because at the end I'll hopefully wrap it up for you. All right, who knows who this guy is? Some of you? Gary Vaynerchuk. Gary Vaynerchuk's big thing is what? Does anybody know what his big push is, the one word that he always talks about? Hustle, all right? Gary is always talking about doing the hustle, the hustle. And in fact, if you go out online, you can, think, you can see that good things come to those who hustle. Stay humble, hustle hard. Uh, it's all about the hustle, right? It's all about getting the next thing, getting busy, keep going, going to all these different networking events, handing out business cards and doing all this stuff. If we're lucky, we'll get to sit down and have a pile of proposals that we have to try to hammer through, uh, right? And at some point, we probably realize that we're on this treadmill, right? We're, we're the hamsters on the wheel. And, uh, and this is kind of what happened to me, is how do I get off of this thing? This is getting a little out, out, you know, crazy. After all, the target for me is just to go fishing. <laughs> I, just, I just wanna go fishing, okay? That's all I wanna do. So I found myself, this is my Photoshop skills. Once again, everybody knows my Photoshop skills are really good. That's me uh, on the hamster wheel. I mentioned this to my mentor now, Bill Pernett, and he gave me a book called The Tyranny of the Urgent. And I read this book and it was fantastic, very short, very quick to the point. Uh, but what I found out along with doing this is that I've got all these people that are asking me to do all these different things, right? Everybody's seen the sales funnel before. You're trying to get everybody aware of your business. You're trying to get them to consider doing something with you and maybe they'll convert. Well, if they convert, oh crap, that's more work, right? So one of the things that I found out early on after talking to Bill was not to insert a furnace filter, but to use a filter, right? And a good filter for me uh, did something really great. It created something in my business, automation. And I fell in love with automation. So that's what I wanna tell you guys a little bit about today. The first thing that I wanted to tell you is there is a way to filter out some of this stuff and not just keep going on the hamster wheel. And the first thing that I like to do when someone calls me uh, with some work or wants a proposal or needs some help with something is I give them homework. So this is fantastic. A lot of times I'll give them homework like here, here's a two page PDF I need you to questionnaire, I need you to fill out. I may have created the, the form online. I just send them a link, say go fill out this form to give me more information about what you want. Now this does a, a great job of filtering people out because the ones that aren't really interested aren't gonna fill out a silly two page questionnaire, right? Immediate filter, it works great. So that's one way to, to get, start getting off the hamster wheel. So I wanna tell you a little bit about what happens if they do fill out that particular form. So one of the things that it does is it dumps that information immediately into my CRM. How many people are using a CRM? Okay, about half, I'd say, maybe a little bit more. Good. I'm using Zoho in this case, but you know, we, we've used a couple other ones. And actually what really happens is a lot of automations happen when they fill that out. It dumps into my CRM, it triggers some email, and it also creates some processes, which I'm gonna go into real quick. So firstly, it dumps into my CRM. On top of creating a task for me or a, or a note that I need to follow up with, with this lead. It also dumps into my base camp, which is my project ma management software. So it assigns some to do's for me or maybe for Amber to do. Somebody needs to do something, follow up with this person, send this person an email, do something. It does that. It assigns the to do's in here. So these are all the different to do's. I can see who's done what and who hasn't checked off what boxes, which is really nice. It also kicks off an email sequence, which is my favorite part of all of this. So one of the things that it does is it dumps uh, that person's email, things like that, into a different system. I use ActiveCampaign, uh, MarketVolt, I think they're here today, Alex is here. MailChimp is another popular one that maybe some of you may use. Uh, I prefer ActiveCampaign for mine. And one of the really cool things that I can do with ActiveCampaign is I can dump these different fields, so the person's name, their email, their phone number, I can dump them into Active Campaign as a new contact. I can tag that person as new client. What happens is when Active Campaign sees that contact with that particular tag, 
it kicks off an email sequence to them. This is a simple email sequence. Send them an email, wait one day, send them a follow-up, and it goes on and on. Here's the email that they get after filling that out. Hey, thanks for filling out the questionnaire. I'll be reviewing this shortly. In the meantime, click here to set up a 30-minute review call. Of course, that goes to Calendly or some sort of scheduling service, and it dumps straight to my uh, Gmail, I mean, I'm sorry, my Google Calendar. So all of that is automated, which is pretty cool. Are you guys freaking out already? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. It also subscribes them to my newsletter, right, which is terrific. So now I have another email that I can start giving them information. On that particular thing, I want to point this out. Uh, it looks crazy, but it's very important. When somebody signs up to your newsletter, the first thing that you do is don't send them the next newsletter. The first thing I do is I dump them into the sequence. The first part is, have they received this? Have they been on this list before? If yes, then don't send them anything else. If they haven't, go ahead and send them something. Send them an email welcoming them to the site, welcome them to Red Canoe, and here's a, here's a copy of it. Uh, I typically get up at five in the morning. Google's really doing a lot of stuff. Here's some free content, right? Uh, here's something to help you out. So it's, it's a great way to introduce my business to them and give them something free. Now, the next steps are very similar to that. I'm, I'm adding value. I'm waiting a day or two. I'm adding value with another email, waiting. And then at the end is when they actually subscribe to my newsletter. So this process takes, I think, around 12 days. So during that process, they're being indoctrinated with the Red Canoe media, uh, whatever, culture, I guess you could call it, right? But they're not immediately just being dumped into my next newsletter and say, here's what's great about my business. I'm providing tons of value. So if there was one thing that you were to do, this would be a great way to start. I'll get back to that. All right, the other thing that happens is it dumps into some processes. So I kind of mentioned earlier that it dumps into my uh, base camp, sets up some, some to-dos. Well, each of those to-dos could be assigned to different people. So what I do is I give those different to-dos to that person to do it. But all of this started when I read a book called Work the System. Andy shared this two months ago, I guess. He shared uh, a thing called Work the System Apply. And if you are a subscriber or a member, you really need to go to the website and check this video out. It's fantastic. But the book, Work the System, is really kind of what got me going on this and understanding how building systems and just putting things in place to start to automate everything really helps. I've shown you an extreme example of some of the things we've done, but just getting started is, is a great tool, a great thing to do. So for my processes, I use a, a service called Process Street, Process.st, it's free never paid for it, which is fantastic. And what it does is it takes, you just create a template. Uh, okay, uh, open your browser, click this link, log in here, do this thing, right? Click here. It turns those into checklists that you can then assign to somebody else, which is very cool, right? So I, ha I have to go through the process once, maybe take some screenshots, things like that. But after that, I can hand that to somebody else to do. Here's an actual process, and it, this is how it assigns to somebody. It's just a checklist. They do the first thing, they check the box, they go on to the next thing. Very cool. So, okay, I've already kind of already said this is insane, right? This is a lot of stuff. So, where should you start, right? Yeah. It, it's all what's in it for me, yeah. right? All right. First of all, read these two books. Bill, is that correct? Read Tyranny of the Urgent. Read Work the System. Tyranny of the Urgent is a maybe 45 minute read, if that. Um, work the System a little bit longer. Uh, but definitely, you've got to read these books because they will change how your business runs. Those both on Amazon. Both on Amazon. And uh, Work the System most likely is on Audible as well. I don't know about Tyranny of the Urgent. It's also free on the website, PDF. So. Oh, on workthesystem.com? Yeah. Free. There you go. Free. Hey, I'll take that. All right. Step number two, document one process. So take one thing that you're doing over and over and document it. When Amber started working for me, every time I taught her something new, I basically just said, okay, Amber, open up Word, and here's what we're gonna do. And she just, she just put it in Word every step. This is a little cute and fancy, but um, you know, it doesn't have to start this way. Put it in Word and start documenting the different things so that next time, I can give it to Amber and she doesn't have to wonder what she did last time or miss a step or something like that. 
Uh, I sent this to Bill about a month ago, maybe two months ago. This is the E4E new subscriber workflow. So out of nowhere, I'm like, you know what? We need to document this thing and who does what and where and how and where, what does the website do next? So this kind of stuff is really cool. This is also a free service called draw.io. If you're more of a visual person and want to draw out your workflows, free. It's a Google product. Uh, very easy to drag and drop, change box colors, all that kind of stuff. Uh, draw the arrows, everything. Really cool. Step number three, document another process. So the reason I put this as step number three is because there's other ways to do it. I mentioned opening Word and just doing it that way. Uh, for some of my processes, I actually just make a video. Because I do a lot of work online, it's easier just to say, go here, click here, do this, then go over here and click this thing, right? So I just create a video, dump that video up to YouTube, send it to the person uh, that needs to do the work. There are definitely more than one way to, to kind of create these processes. Step number four, find someone to do the work. <laughs> I did not have her permission. She knows nothing about this. I can tell by the look on her face. <laughs> like dad. But the cool thing about what Amber's done is she's really moved up and we've had to find other people to do the work, right? So she's, she's moving up in the, in, the, in the organization, so we need a virtual assistant. Usually there's virtual assistants in the room at E4E. If not, there are other services. There's a remote, there's Upwork, there's free up. There's lots of these services out there where you can just get somebody that does a certain task. Like I have somebody that just does WordPress stuff. I have somebody that does link building for SEO. If I have all these different people and I can just plug them in as I need them, as I need them to help me. Uh, so there's no contract, no commitment, anything like that. It's just on, on a as needed server or basis. Uh, I use FreeUp uh, because it has a little bit more of a um, uh, technical angle to it, so they, they know Amazon and WordPress and you know some of these a little bit more technical things. But just find somebody to do the work, uh, and if you can start to kind of build one of these processes, then you can go fishing. <laughs> All right? Isn't that great? All right, questions and hopefully answers. Who's got a question? Les. Um, so I've been looking at Process Street, and I was looking to see if they have, because I like what's on there, mm -hmm. uh, but I was wondering if they have the process diagram capabilities that Draw.io has. Do you know? Nope. Uh, pretty know. much it's just build a checklist and plug it into their system. Okay. And so using Draw.io, you just, I mean, just literally get on there. It will show you how to create a process diagram. Yep. Process and there's chart. all kinds of templates, both on Process Street. They have templates for for you know, writing a blog post. Everybody has to do that. It's almost always the same. Then, so there are some that you can preload in. Same with draw.io. They've got a ton of templates that you can dump in and then modify. Got it. So I'm going to make an offer to the group. One of the things that I do is help people with process diagrams and also process improvement processes. So if anybody wants to talk with me, I'm willing to give you some guidance direction. If you've got a process that you want to improve, I've got a very specific, very simple process to help you work through that awesome. process. Thank you, Les. <laughs> All right, Andy. One of the tools that I will use when I'm demonstrating and videoing things, which is another freebie, is called Screencast-O-Matic. Okay. And basically, it records what's on your screen and, and your voice as you're, if you've got to have a microphone. So that's, yeah. that's a good tool that I yeah. use. Screencast-O-Matic.com. So I use Zoho for my CRM. I'm using Zoho One, which is all 40-something of their products for one price a month. One of their products is webinars. So I actually just start a webinar that I'm the only one attending, and, that's, and then I hit record, and then I do it that way and upload that at the end. So lots of cool ways to do it. Jim? Is it okay if I give a testimonial? Yes, sir. <laughs> So uh, I, I want to let everybody know that Cynthia Carell has been working with us and pulling down lists from a variety of areas where we tell her to. Then she has helped us create four different responses. So John Ayers, who just left the room, and I was going to give him a plug, uh, his team makes calls to those lists, 
And we are coming up with about 24, 25 emails and appointments from that. And we take that list, yeah, per, per calling session. We take that list, we give it to Will and his team who automate this for us based on the things that you've just heard. And, and now I don't have to follow up at all. It's just automatically happening. And it's just amazing the way it's working. So I wanted to give a shout out for Will and Cynthia and John who put this together for us. And uh, it's been ongoing and very successful. Yeah, cool. Good job, thank you. Yeah, that was fun to build. Uh, we just moved his list into Google Sheets. As soon as John Ayers gets off the phone with somebody that has an email, they plug that email in. As soon as that email shows up in there, a, a sequence is started. It dumps that person to MailChimp and it starts a similar uh, email sequence to that person. Thank you for your phone call, blah, blah, blah. Uh, very cool, very seamless. Yeah, very good. All right, any other questions? Brian? Hold on, Brian. <laughs> There's a process, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> There's one in every group. Yeah. <laughs> um, have you ever used IFTTT? I have. So um, there's two services that are very similar. There's Zapier, which we've talked about in the past, and there's IFTTT, if this, then that, I think is what it's called. Both of those services, uh, which we're using Zapier in Jim's case. So that allows Google Sheets to talk to MailChimp. So those are the pieces, the glue that sticks all these different systems together. Uh, so we're using Zapier. I think it's 10 bucks a month for the pro version. Uh, but yeah, those services uh, do a lot of different things. I have an uh, IFTT thing set up for my Nest thermostat. When it sees my Android within 20 miles of home, it automatically kicks the temperature down or up, depending on when it is. So, but there's some really cool things you can do with automation. To Will, can you tell us real briefly about the next version of your company and Lead Forensics? Uh, sure. So one of the new things that we're launching uh, is called LeadStorm, and it's powered by a company called Lead Forensics. One of the things that it does is it actually lets, uh, lets you, as a business owner, know what businesses were looking at your website. So if you're in the B2B market and you're putting blogs and you're putting things out on your website, but nobody's really contacting you, this software actually tells you who is on your website. So within the last week, uh, I had uh, Schnooks, Deerbergs, um, what is it, PBR, Public Bull Riding, um, Monsanto. Uh, so all these organizations are showing up at my website. It tells me what pages they were looking at, so then I know how to follow up with them from kind of a, a cold call standpoint, but it's not really cold because they've already been to the site. Uh, but really cool stuff that's, that's, uh, that we're getting ready to launch, so I'm getting the zero there. <laughs> so thank you very much. I appreciate it.